you guys enjoyed my YouTube story video last week so much that I've decided to come back and do a second video over the topic. So if you've not seen my YouTube story video and basically the journey that I've taken since 2011, I will link that video in a card above. I share everything from where it started, why I decided to do YouTube, where my name came from, and everything. And I get a little personal in that video, so definitely check that out. That will give you a little bit more information about me as well, because I do open up about a few things. So I did go through the comment section on YouTube, like I always do. I looked at all the questions on Facebook and Instagram and in our Golden Circle Facebook group. If you're not a part of the Golden Circle on Facebook, I encourage you to go become a part of our positive community. Let me say one thing. When you request to join, please answer the questions. And I have the questions so that I'm not getting random people on Facebook that just somehow happened upon the group. So make sure you answer the questions. So I looked at all of the questions and I kind of put them into one category. And that category is starting a YouTube channel. So I'm going to share some tips today for starting a YouTube channel. Now this is not like the ins and outs of the technical side of it. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to press on YouTube and all of that. This is basically tips for starting a YouTube channel. So some things that I would recommend if you're wanting to take that journey. These are in no particular order, just as they popped into my head, I wrote them down. So we're gonna get started with the first one and I think this is the most important one and that is to determine your niche. I'm calling it niche. I know that some people might call it niche, but I'm calling it niche. So I'll put, I'll put it down here so you know what I'm talking about in case you don't know what I am referring to. And you need to be passionate about it. Here's the thing. You have to be energetic about what you are talking about. But fall is my favorite time of year, so I'm super excited for all of the fall decorating, for Halloween and Thanksgiving. You have to be confident about what you are talking about. If you are not confident, if you're not passionate about it, it comes across on film. Believe me, it does. So you need to find one area or a small group of areas that you're gonna center your channel around. On my channel, my niche includes organizing, planning, and budgeting. So my content centers around those three areas. Now I will throw in extra videos. You wanna throw in the extra videos. You don't wanna make all of your content about that, but you do wanna throw in what they call community videos. Those videos that are made for people that watch you, that subscribe to you, for them to get to know you better. You're not putting out this content to you know go viral and get a ton of views you're wanting your community to get to know you so, like last Monday when I put out that YouTube story video that was not a video that I was trying to you know get on recommended searches and all of that it was for you guys I wanted you guys to know where my channel started and a little bit of my backstory because that makes it more relatable you get to know me a little bit better Favorite things, that's another one that I throw in that's technically not in those three categories, but it's to get to know me better. It's a way for us to communicate and to open up. So don't make your content all about the community videos. You wanna stick to your niche. So for me, it's organizing, planning, and budgeting, and you need to be passionate about it. So for me, at the time when I started YouTube in 2015, a lot of people were doing makeup videos. And I will tell you, I've had so many people want me to do get ready with me videos. I wanna see how you do your makeup. You guys, I'm not, I know Zippo about makeup. So I'm not doing makeup videos on this channel because I know nothing about it. So I would seriously be sitting here talking Talking to you about it and not knowing what in the heck I was doing. So I have done a get ready with me video in my vlogmas series. So vlogmas is your time to get personal. 
if you decide to do it. It's a big commitment. If you guys want me to talk about Vlogmas, I can do another video over that. So that's going to be the common question for today. Do you want me to do a separate video talking about Vlogmas and basically my take on it? Everybody does Vlogmas different. And I've kind of gotten into the groove of mine. It's not the same as everybody else. But if you guys want me to talk about it in a video, I definitely will. My second tip is to put time in creating a name. This is not going to be a process that takes five seconds. You need to make sure that your name is something that you want to be associated with. And this is a great way to think of it. When you're out and about and somebody's like, oh, hey, that's Kristen. She runs the gold project. You want to make sure that when they say the gold project, you don't want to like cringe underneath a restaurant table, for instance. And I speak from experience because my name used to be the OCD life. Then I changed it to the gold project and it was a very difficult process. And at that time it was not YouTube. So I can't imagine if I was the OCD life on a blog and YouTube, everything that would, it would have taken to go back and change the name. So make sure that you like your name and that's the one 10 years from now that you want to stand behind because Think of it this way, when I say the gold project and like my intro, it has the gold project on it. So if I up and change my name, all of my videos from the past are going to say the gold project which really is not a big deal. But for me, I'm kind of anal about those type things. So make sure that you're passionate about your name and you stand behind it 100%. And for me, that light bulb, when you know you have it, it's going to go off. So when I feel like when I did the gold project, I'm like, that's it. So, and this is important with the whole name creating, check all of social media. If you want to stick with Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, those are the three that I use. Go and check and see if that name is available. And I will tell you when I first did my name change and I went to change my name on Instagram, the gold project was not available. So I had to go with gold project blog. I hated that. I truly hated that. So then a few years later, I checked and it was available. So I was able to change it. So it's just easier when you have the same handle for everything. And I will also say that I even went to the extent of checking the trademark website because I'm almost to the point where I feel like I need to trademark my name. So you guys, this was the process that I went through for my name. So I was like, okay, the gold project, I checked all social media. I checked the trademark site because if there is a name that's already the gold project, I could not trademark the gold project. So I will actually leave that website in the description below. So you can do that search to see if the name that you choose is available. So I am about to that point to trademark my brand. So it is very important that I can trademark it. So the third thing that I'm going to recommend is for you to be consistent. Get a schedule. And that does not mean that you need to vlog every single day or share a video every single day. You need to make it fit you. So when I started YouTube back in 2015, I only shared two videos a week because this is my side hustle. That's what I call it. My main job is a teacher. So at the beginning, I only did two videos a week because I had no idea what I was doing. Remember, I have felt my way through everything. Nobody has taught me anything. I have learned everything myself through trial and error. So I only did two videos a week and I think I did them on like Tuesday and Friday, I think. I'm not sure about that. So as I've gone through, I've kind of tweaked it and now I do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please listen, you do not 
have to post a video every single day. Your content needs to be good. If you're doing five videos a week and your content sucks, then your channel is not going to move. You want to stick with a schedule, a schedule that's right for you, and you want to let your community know that schedule. So that's why my whole spiel on this channel, when I say I post videos three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it is repetitive. But it's getting to where some of y'all could probably sit here and like throw it out and say exactly what I say when I say it because it's repetitive. You know, okay, she's posting a video on a Monday. She's posting a video on Wednesday. She's posting a video on a Friday. And I've even gotten to where you know what time it is posted. 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. So you guys know Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. I will have a video posted. If I don't have a video posted, I have already told you ahead of time why I am not sharing. Number four, are you listening? I want to make sure that you're listening because do not get sucked into this trap. Do not buy equipment in the beginning. Did you hear me? Do not buy equipment in the beginning. It is very tempting to do it. And when I gave that survey back in 2014 and people wanted me to do YouTube, the first thing I thought was I don't have the money to get the equipment that YouTube requires. I can't do YouTube. And then I thought about it for three months. So I didn't start my channel until March of 2015. And I decided I was just going to use my husband's iPhone. I was not going to spend any money to get any equipment until I realized if it's something I was going to stick with. So you don't know in the beginning if it's something that you're going to like. And you guys, I can't tell you how many times I've had to tell people, it's so much more than putting your face in front of a camera. Good morning and welcome to our official day one. Derek's ready to meet Mickey today. There are so many elements behind the scene that people do not know. So do not buy equipment in the beginning. Do not spend thousands of dollars. And it would be so easy to spend thousands of dollars. So in the beginning, March of 2015, I used my husband's iPhone Plus. I think his was a Plus then. For, I want to say, a year. Once my channel started making a little bit of money, then I bought a camera. And then I want to say my Diva Ring that I've got right here in front of me, I did not purchase that until 2017. So two years after starting my channel. I did not go out in the beginning and buy all of the equipment. I did not have the money. I used what I had, my husband's iPhone. I propped it up on some textbooks, I think it was. And the tripod that I'm using right now, it's nothing fancy. I do have one picked out that I want to get for Plant With Me videos, but it's not on the purchase yet list. Is actually one of my husband's old football tripods. And you may wonder how in the world do you get the tripod to work for playing with me videos. You guys, it's sitting on a table normally. I have it facing down and it's usually propped up on either textbooks or a bowl. Seriously, that's how I do it. It is propped up on a table and I lean it down and I kind of rig it up. So that is how it works. So I have not gone out still to this day, probably what I've purchased. I ended up purchasing two cameras over time and I now just use my Canon G7X, which is a vlogging camera. I found that the big T6i camera that I had, I just didn't like it as well as I like this one. So this one, it does the autofocus really well and it's just more user friendly. So I would recommend the camera that I have right now. I will link all of my equipment in the description below, but please don't go and buy all the things in the beginning. Don't do that to yourself. Gradually get things when you know that it's something that you want to stick with. Like right now I'm sitting by a window. So if you're wanting to get natural light, film by a window. Still the best lighting. Number five, do not be scared to screw up. 
Did you hear me? Do not be scared to screw up. And I'm sharing this because that was me in the beginning. Hey you guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my purse emergency kit. In the beginning I was trying to sit all proper and today I am going to share with you a planner supply haul. And I was so robotic. Like I told you on the last video, it's really hard for me to go and watch those videos because now I know what y'all were talking about. You need to loosen up. And I was like, I am loosening up. I don't know why they're telling me that. And I would have people say, you need to smile when you talk. And I seriously one day sat in front of my husband. And I'm like, how do you smile when you talk? I don't get what they're talking about. Am I supposed to say something and then smile at the same time? And it took me probably until last year to understand what y'all were talking about. You want to see imperfect me. What are you doing? Just in a picture. <laughs> I can't hold the bucket. So perfect Kristen is not what you want to see. So when I let that wall down, which is very hard for me to do, I have a natural wall built up. <laughs> I've had to like really knock it down over the years and I let my imperfect self out you guys started really telling me that you could relate to me early in the morning with such a positive attitude good morning it is 7 45 we just got up here from breakfast I only ate bacon because you know I can't really eat any of that that you feel I'm down to earth and it's not natural for me. I'm not a good public speaker. So for me to let myself on camera, out on camera, was a very difficult process. Good morning, almost good afternoon. It's 11 o'clock here. Good morning. good morning. So for me, I've always been a perfectionist. So letting my wall down and letting my imperfect self out was very, very difficult in the beginning. So just know, imperfect is okay. So how do you know what to talk about? In the beginning, this is number six. Is it six? Yes, this is number six. Take notes in the beginning. And even right now, you guys, I have my talking points written on this so I don't miss anything. So every video that requires me, most of them now, sometimes I just kind of wing it. But in the beginning especially, I would have a notebook in front of me with my talking points. Now I would not read from it, but I would have my talking points. So like right now in this video, I have everything that I want to share with you. So I know what I need to say and what I need to talk about. So it will have, number six, take notes, especially at first. Talking points. That's what I wrote down. So just know that it's okay to jot down some notes because especially in the beginning, you're not going to know where to start. You may, you know, start going all over the place and get off topic. And having something written down is going to keep you on focus. So I... I do tend to do that and I have to really edit the videos when I start going on a rant. I'm like, nobody wants to hear about something for five minutes that has nothing to do with the topic. So in the beginning, take notes. And if you're wondering where I take my notes, I will share my video above of my content planner. If you've not seen that video, you guys, my monthly deluxe has been a game changer for this channel and my content. So I just open it up for the month I'm in, like right now I'm May, and behind May I'm using one of the notes pages to jot down some notes for this video. So it's where all of my lists go and all of that. So don't be scared to make a list of talking points. Number seven, editing. Start simple. And I wish there was like a magic button that I could press that would give you all of the information about editing. And I will tell you that the editing process was so, it was, it was a difficult one because I'm like, I don't know where to start. 
what editing software do I purchase? And I seriously sat down and just started typing in inexpensive video editing software. And I went with PowerDirector. I will leave the link for that in the description below. I have been using that since 2015, so for five years. And I think I'm finally at the end of the life with it because it started crashing on me when I'm filming videos. There was one video it crashed 15 times, and I'm not kidding. And I don't know if it's because I'm layering so many pieces in a video, especially when I do voiceovers. My Clean With Me videos, you know, I may have one video. I've got at least three different things layered at one time. I have the main footage, I have the music, I have my voiceover, and then sometimes I have text. So I feel like it, it, I'm at the point where I don't think the software is that advanced, so it keeps crashing on me. So it has trouble putting four different things together and running through it without completely crashing itself and it's not able to keep up. So for the video editing, start simple. And I know a lot of people start with iMovie. I did not do that because I didn't know, I didn't want to use it on my phone. I don't know, can you use it on your computer? Or is that on a Mac? I don't have a Mac. I have an Asus right now. So next year I'm thinking about getting a Mac computer or, or down the road and using Final Cut Pro. Right now I have an Asus laptop and use PowerDirector. So do not go out and spend a ton of money on editing software. Get something inexpensive. The one I got was under $100. Very user friendly. I sat down at my kitchen table when I filmed that first video, had no idea what I was doing, and I was able to walk myself through it and kind of piece it together. So start simple, and as you get your kind of feet wet and you start learning how to edit, you'll start learning things like transitions and how to add this and how to add that into your editing process. So start simple. If you have any questions about anything with the editing, let me know. If I have enough questions, I might do another video because now in my head there are a few things, other things that I want to talk about. Last but not least for this video is backgrounds. You do not need a complex background. So right now I'm seriously sitting in my bedroom floor. Like here's the bathroom door, there's the bedroom door, Here's my dresser back here. So in the beginning, I used to sit in front of my bookcase in the office. And then as I got used to editing and was watching it, the background was way too busy. So I've kind of started using areas that the background was less busy. So I either sit on my bed and you'll just have the gray wall behind me. Or recently I've been sitting in the floor. I just like sitting in the floor. I'm not sure. Now I may not be able to get up in a few minutes and may have to have Kate come and help me because I've been sitting down here for a while. But keep the background pretty simple. All you have to do is sit a chair in front of a window with a wall behind you and make it a light background. So if you have a really dark wall, I really wouldn't suggest sitting in front of it because it can be distracting. It might be a little bit too much. So you want a light, simple background. So those are my eight tips for starting a YouTube channel. So in the comments below, share two things with me. Number one, do you want me to share a, I guess, Vlogmas tips type of video? And number two, do you want me to share a second starting a YouTube channel video? There are a few things I could have mentioned, but I didn't want to overwhelm you in one video. So let me know in the comments below. So you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you give it a big thumbs up. By giving my videos a thumbs up, it shows YouTube you're engaged and you like my content, which means they'll start suggesting it and recommending it to more people, which means our community will grow and will continue to spread positivity. Also, I hope you hit that red subscribe button to become a part of our community and our mission to get organized on a budget and with a plan together. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and until next time, bye you guys.